comes on this meta champ only way he can win now is going for the earthquake versus this meta champ but go oh my god wait he catches oh my god okay what is up everyone today we're gonna be taking a look at some battles for my favorite player to watch during the world championships crescent angels from japan i really knew nothing about this player before the tournament started but wow, did he impress me. Just incredible clean gameplay all around. Catching moves left and right. It was truly impressive to watch. I'm not going to waste too much time on this intro. We got a lot of battles to watch today. I was originally just going to show some highlights, but that wouldn't do him justice. We're just going to watch almost every battle he did on stream. Starting with this match versus Lurgan Rocket in round four of the Torment. Crescent Angel running a very cool team of Alola Ninetales, Obstagon, Venusaur, Sableye, Swampert and Reggie Steel, which is very similar to the team I ran in last Sean's qualifier, except I had Galarian Stunts instead of Reggie Steel and Shadow Swampert uh, and Venusaur, so big fan of his Team there, Lurgan Rocket running something incredibly spicy with the Shadow Queen, Warrine, Cresselia, Scrafty, Diggersby, and Tapu Fini. Lurgan definitely not a fan of that Venusaur, which can beat uh, the Diggersby, Tapu Fini, Scrafty, and Cresselia pretty cleanly. And then Frenzies do a ton of damage to both Warrine and Needle Queen, of course. Uh, so I do expect uh, Crescent Angel to bring out the Venusaur combined with some Needle Queen answer. Uh, probably the Swampert, though actually the Needle Queen uh, wall rank core for Lurgan Rockets is like very very strong. So I expect a uh, Needle Queen wall rank from Lurgan Rocket and Crescent Angel, probably it's something like Venusaur, Swampert, maybe Sableye or Reggie Steel. Uh, we'll see. We're gonna head right into the matches here, which by the way, I will speed up a little bit just so we can get through these a little bit faster. Starting with a Venusaur lead into this new queen here. And we do see Venusaur Swampert from Crescent Angels, like I expect. It's gonna instant switch into the Registeer since Venusaur does generally lose against Neo Queen. Ritzy will also generally lose against the new queen though, so this isn't amazing for Crescent Angel. Fires a Focus Blast though, only the new queen does a bunch of damage. Rogan Rocket decides to bank all of his energy and switch into the Scrafty. Uh, that energy on the queen could be real dangerous later, as it can hit the Venusaur for really hard. And also the Swamper doesn't want to take an Earth Power either. Crescent Angel not going to bait with the Zap Cannon if Lurgan lets this go, that's devastating. Uh, but... Uh, it gets shielded, which is used. Now neutralizing uh, the boost uh, Lurgan got from a previous power punch, but he's going to be able to fire off another one now to boost his attack by one stage more. And then attempt to farm down the Reggie Seal, but Crescent Angel doesn't allow the farm down, uh, doesn't want the Scrafty to end up with too much energy to switch in the Venusaur. Shields up this foul play and will now be able to over farm and get to another Frenzy, but not for, before the Nidu Queen uh, switches in and goes for the Earth Power. Crescent Angel makes a good call here, shields up the Earth Power, Gonna go for the Frenzy now that he's doubled up. So we'll knock out the Needle Queen at this point. Lurgan still with his shield up into the war. And this is not looking too good for Crescent Angel at this point. Since she still has Swampert in the back. Which doesn't really want to see the war in either. And this thing will outpace Lurgan. Throwing the Ice Cold Spear one before the Frenzy can get to. Or the Venusaur can get to another Frenzy. How is Crescent Angel going to be able to play out of this? Uh, this is an Earthquake, I'm not sure. I don't think an Earthquake knocked us out at this point. Scrafty still has a tiny bit of energy. Bro, I can't get farmed down. He hit a Hydro on that too. Which he's gonna do here. After Lurgan switches it in. This will knock out the Scrafty. But then, can you outpace? Oh, it doesn't actually knock out. He catches the Power Punch on the Reggie Steel. Oh, can he farm down the Scrafty now and get to the Earthquake? He's one away. And they see him be tied. Does this Earthquake knock out the Warren at this point? It does knock it out. What a game to start the video. Crescent Angel just juggling his mons around, catching moves. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to see. Very, very well played. Next match, Crescent Angel picks up a very good lead with his Swampert into the Needle Queen. We see Lurgan Rocket switch into the Warren, which. Crescent Angel has a good response to in the Alola Ninetales. Earthquake will do a good chunk of damage though, so might consider shielding this. He does consider shielding this. Actually, he does shield this, in fact. Uh, Warrind will reach another Earthquake, which uh, well, will do a lot of damage to A9, uh, but won't knock it out. So Crescent Angel is free to let this go. And then he has a Weather Ball stored 
for the Nido Queen that's likely coming in. Or Lurgan could also conserve, bring in the Tapu Fini here just to take this super effective move. Uh, that's now gonna hit the Nido Queen. Does he get to another one? No, he faints to that one poison jab. That's unfortunate for Crescent, but still has a hard answer in the Swampert on the Nido Queen. And now he has a hard answer on the Tapu Fini in the Venusaur. Uh, Crescent Age Ult just making a very good line call in this next game. We're just gonna. Fast forward this one a little bit, I think, because this is basically over. The Venus starts just gonna frenzy uh, the Tapu Fini again. Then Nido Queen comes back in, and he's just gonna be able to Hydro Cannon to knock it out. And Crescent Angel takes the victory over Lurgan Rocket. In the next round, Crescent Angels is up against Zardi, who's running a lineup with Warai, Nido Queen, Azumarill, Deoxys Defense, Cavalry is an Obstagoon. Crescent Angels Swampert looks extremely strong here. It really only loses to the Warrime, but even there you have play. Besides, that's basically neutral or winning matchups all around. Same scouts for the Venusaur, who doesn't do well versus Warrime or Nidoqueen. But besides that, you got fine uh, matchups. Zardi has a lot of play with that Nidoqueen, though, which is kind of troublesome for Crescent Angels. Besides the Swampert and Sableye, uh, the matchups aren't very good for crescent angels versus that needle queen so do I expect that to come out from zardi as well as maybe the kofa grigas because you really only have to worry about the obstagon anyway we're not taking too much time on the teams this video we're just gonna head right into the first battle where zardi is leading an azumarill into the sableye with whoa crescent angel running a kind of an aba line double week to uh to azumarill with the sableye in the lead and obstacle in the back so forced to stay in there this is not that bad of a matchup for a uh, crescent angel sableye though uh since you can hit the return do a bunch of damage and i can shoot start shooting these moves and maybe even farm down the Azumarill. Yeah, if you let one return go, you are in a pretty bad spot as Azumarill since they can now just double shield and probably farm you all the way down. Uh, definitely not ideal since Zardi has a has two Pokemon in the back which are super weak to save. Like Crescent Angel is actually going to opt to throw a foul play here. I think this is a tad of a misplay because I'm quite sure you could have farmed down there. I think Crescent Angel's realized and actually doesn't even charge the foul play. So he wants more farm with Zardi. Uh, doesn't allow that switches right into the Kofa Grigas, which I think Crescent Angels is incredibly fine with uh, Since he's just gonna be able to take both shields back with double foul play at this point and bring in a super hard counter to the Kofa Grigas uh, In Obstagoon. Yeah, this is uh, this is not looking very good for Zardi at this point though that Deoxys might still put in a lot of work Dark Pulse is adding up a Add as well, but you need you need you need like three more at this point to knock out the Obstagon. Crescent Angel is gonna go for the Night Slash here, so knock out uh, the Co oh this whoa I underestimated Kofa Grigas's bow. Wow, that did nothing. That actually did nothing. Doesn't doesn't even knock out the coffin, uh, but should be able to farm down at this point, right? I'm surprised Zardi allows that. I feel like he should just switch into the Deoxys, but I guess he's scared of the save. Lai wants to. Uh, Keep his switch timer alive so he can potentially catch a, catch a foul play later, which I think the Sable might be able to reach. But now, you know, oh my god, now the Obstagon is loaded, got a boost, and is just going to be able to take out this Deoxys and probably a Zoom reel, uh, with the Sable Eye. Ooh, I feel like this is a bit of a misplay from Zardi. He has a Psycho Boost. He should have really thrown it. In the show 6 pick 3 formats, oh actually never mind, I was gonna say in the show 6 pick 3 formats, knowing, like getting as much information as possible in the first game is vital. And I thought that if Zardi threw the Psycho Boost here, he would have been able to knock out the Sableye and see the third one from Crescent Angels, which of course is huge. But he also still has the Obstagoon, so he, I think even if he throws Psycho Boost, he's just gonna get the counter down. Uh, so maybe, maybe not that bit of a big of a misplay. Crescent Angel Sableye here just going rampant. I think Zardi should have put a little, at least one more shield into the Azu, uh, make sure it took out the Sableye, and, and then he probably would have been fine. Next game, you see a Swampert lead from Crescent Angels into uh, Zardi's Obstagon. It's a pretty neutral lead here. Zardi's gonna go for the charge move first, just a Night Slash, so Crescent Angels doesn't. Uh, shielded at this point. Crescent Angel starts going for these Hydro Cannons. One coming through right now with Zardi. No shields. Probably gonna throw another one before the next Night Slash. No, he doesn't. Since Zardi switched into the Deoxys Defense, which gets met by a Sableye. So Zardi again with uh, the Sableye on his uh, Deoxys this time. Uh, this is not looking too good. But Zardi also has a Nidoqueen. 
back, which is is not too bad versus whatever Crescent Angels has left. The Swamper does have a move stored with his low enough health where Needle Queen can probably just fast move down. And then the Reggie Steel definitely doesn't want to take Earth Power. So this is not over. Probably going to bring in the Obstagoon right now. Uh, doesn't have to shield this move, luckily. And I think he already threw, already threw the Night Slash, right? He did. If uh, Crescent Angel springs in the Swampert now, that puts Zardy in a pretty decent spot. Oh, especially since he got the boost. He could farm down now. Doesn't want to, though. Yeah, I want to save those shields for Needle Queen so he can take out that Reggie Steel. But he, Crescent Angel, just with perfect energy management, has a Hydro Cannon stored up, is able to fire off uh, it against. Uh, the Needle Queen and now brings in the Reggie Steel and with a shield up, this is a pretty fine matchup for, for Reggie Steel. If you're the Reggie Steel here, I feel like you never shield the first move, honestly. Because the Earth Power doesn't knock out. And then you force the Needle Queen to throw another Earth Power still, and then you use your shield. I feel like the only way you can possibly lo lose this is by shielding a Poison Fang here. Which Crescent Angels actually ends up doing. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like that was a misplay from Crescent Angels. And then he starts zap cannoning, which I thought was wild. He zap cannons once, which uh, Zardy actually shielded, so that was a really good bait from Crescent Angels. You know, neutralizing his defense drop. Now gonna shield up uh, the correct move in the Earth Power, and he's actually gonna go for another zap cannon, which I thought was wild. But. It does bring the Needle Queen into a Focus Blast range, so it actually makes a ton of sense. And he catches the Poison Fang on Swampert. Dude, there's just so much, go so much going on this game. There's so much going on. All right, Crescent Angels cannot lose it at, at this point, as long as he makes sure to throw in the middle of a Poison Jab to make sure he can't catch, but Zardy doesn't here. This will knock out the Needle Queen. Oh, wait, Zardy didn't have any Pokemon left. Never mind what I just said, but he just takes out the Needle Queen right there, wins the match, very well played by Crescent Angel. Next round, we got Crescent Angels versus Godon Hara. This is the winner's finals. We got the only two undefeated players left here. This match, this best of five actually, will decide who moves on to the grand finals and who moves on to the loser's bracket to give it another try in the loser's finals. Godon Hara running a squad with Shadow Ball, Ryan, Metacham, Altaria, Lickitung, Kanto, Ninetales, and Reggie Steel. Looks pretty tough for Crescent Angels, to be honest. Especially that Kanto, Ninetales has five, well, three really good matchups in the other Ninetales, Venusaur, and Reggie Steel. And then two decent matchups uh, versus the Obstagoon and Sayulai. Really only has to watch out for the Swampert, which Godon Hara is covering for extremely well with the Altaria, with the Lickitung. And the Walrein, which all beat it pretty well. And then the meta champ, which is kind of even. So honestly, this, this matchup looks extremely tough for Crescent Angels just from the start. Do you think he has some play, though? If he can align his Alolan Ninetales properly versus the Walrein, meta champ, Altaria, or Swampert versus the Kanto Ninetales. Or maybe even Sweet Bit Reggie Steel. He could, he could definitely have a lot of play here, but definitely not as much play as Godon Hara has in the first game. We do see a Kanto Ninetales lead into the Sableye. This is not exactly where you want to see the Kanto Ninetales as Crescent Angel, since you also have a Swampert in the back. But this is much better than having it aligned to Alolan Ninetales. So you definitely want to stay here, in here as Crescent Angels. This is a pretty okay matchup as Sableye. You will get to the foul play before their second Weather Ball. You just win the CMP tie. Uh, but I'm pretty sure if Kanto Ninetales decides to farm down now, it's able to farm you down before the next foul play. Godon Hara does shield this up. Probably gonna go for the farm down now. But he actually throws the move. I'm pretty sure if he would have uh if he would have gone for the farm down there, he would have he would have gotten it. But he throws the weather ball instead, which Crescent Angel actually shields up because he got a shadow claw through. He now has a foul play loaded the throw at this Kanto Ninetales. But Godon Hara realizes that and catches it on his wall right, keeping his uh Kanto Ninetales alive for another day, which is definitely not too good. Uh, for Crescent Angels, who's gonna bring in the Alola Ninetales into this war right now. Who only gets to an Icicle Spear? Wait, did he really not reach the Earthquake? Oh, he really didn't reach the Earthquake. Alright, goes for the Icicle Spear. This hits the Alola Ninetales. Now, Goran Hara is gonna bring in the Kanto Ninetales, most likely. Yeah, he's definitely gonna bring in the Kanto Ninetales, which... Oh, wow, wait! Crescent had the Weather Ball! He should have just throw the Weather Ball immediately. Throwed? Throw, thrown 
He sure does throw the weather ball immediately. All right, bit of a misplay from Crescent Angels there. Gonna throw the weather ball now into Golden Hada. Uh, gonna get a couple charms on this Metacham. Only way he can win now is going for the Earthquake versus this Metacham. But go. Oh my god, wait, he catches. Oh my god, okay. I was gonna say, but Golden Hada gets to the Psychic. Oh, that's insane. He caught the Psychic. He caught the Psychic on the save light. Wow. Okay, I, I've, I've watched... I, I was here live. I watched these battles live, but I forgot some of them. Wow, I didn't see that one coming. That was insane. Uh, Crescent Angels just inside his opponent's head. We gotta, we gotta replay that, dude. We gotta replay that. That was insane. Look at how much... Look at how much the Metacham overfarms, right? Look at how much the Metacham overfarms. <laughs> how... How does he do it? How does he do it? It's freaking ridiculous, dude. It is so freaking ridiculous. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> what a match. What a match. That was so good. Okay, okay. Let's get into this next game. All right. We see Obstagoon into the Kanto Ninetales this time. Again, this is uh, this is a pretty okay matchup for Obstagoon, actually, uh, since you do have pace. And you don't have the Alola Ninetales lined up versus the Kanto Ninetales, so... Uh, Crescent Angel's in a decent spot there, especially since he gets the boost. That is very good news for Crescent Angel's. Gonna shield up this move here. Can he farm down? We can't. Ooh, we should have really thrown the move. Now he's gonna let go. Does bring his Obstagoon quite low, but he can still throw a Night Sash versus whatever comes in next. Honestly, looking at this backline, maybe... He shouldn't have shielded the Obstagoon. Maybe he should... Nah, actually, I was gonna say, if he just... No, I was gonna say, if he just no shields the Obstagoon, then he has Swamp it in the back, to just, or A9 in the back, just clean up Warrine and Metacham. But it's quite obvious that once he brings in the Swampert versus uh, the... the Kanto Ninetales, they're probably gonna switch out anyway, and then they save the Kanto Ninetales for the Alola Ninetales later, so I think Crescent Angels made a good play there, just taking out uh, the... The Kanto Ninetales and now hoping his Alola Ninetales can sweep. He's gonna shoot up the Psychic. Uh Hala is gonna bring in the Shadow War Rain. At this point, Crescent just has to get shields down. Has to get shields down and then hope he can Earthquake or Hydro Cannon this War Rain to fainting. But oh oh try to catch an Earthquake too. Yeah, at that point the game was just over. Cause even if I, when I was in the crowd, I heard people say that Crescent Angel should have just taken the Earthquake on Alola Ninetales and then thrown two Hydro Cannons with Swampert into the Warrion. The thing is, Golden Hada was over farming. If Golden Hada over farms by just one, just one, all he needs is one extra Powder Snow before throwing the Earthquake, then knocking out the Alola Ninetales, Golden Hada will get to uh, two Icicle Spears in. Eight powder snows, eight more powder snows. Whereas the Swampert needs nine Mutchels for two Hydro Cannons. And seeing as Warren sails a shield and two Ice Cold Spears knock out, uh, Golden Hatter just wins there. The only win condition Crescent Angels has here is catching the Earthquake. It is really the only win condition Crescent Angel has. And that's what he goes for, but it doesn't work out. Wait, you see that? I thought, look, wait, what happened there? Did he press the Earthquake? Wait, 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 wait. Can I pause this? Oh, oh shit, it's not. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Production. Production. Can we pause here? It looked like he pressed the earthquake. Or at least his cursor was above it. Look at that. Wait, what? Hmm. I don't. Well, there's one finger, like, left on the wall, right? And there's one on the earthquake. Do you see that? Maybe he's just like swiping it. I don't know. That is strange. I mean, it wasn't like a tapping motion. It maybe he just had the finger on the screen and he swiped it, and that's why it didn't go off. That's strange. That's strange. Uh, but yeah, uh, point is, Crescent Angel went for the only win con. It didn't work out, and now the Swamper it is gonna get taken out, and the Warrant still has an earthquake for the Alola Nitos as well. GG. Next match, Crescent Angels goes with a very risky line of Obstagoon lead. Swampert in the back, not expecting the Yotari to come out probably, but here it is. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, 
This is not too good, especially with Licky Tongue in the back for Sableye and Swampert. Uh, we're just gonna speed through this battle. I don't wanna make this an hour long video. And this is basically played out from the start. The Otaria is ruining the Sableye as well. It's already in the yellow. The Otaria has taken out both Obstagoon and basically Sableye. Probably taking a shield too. No, actually, not even taking a shield. But yeah, Lickitung comes in. Sableye throws some moves. And then Swampert is just gonna get countered down here. So this match, unfortunately, played out from the start. Crescent Angel took a risk didn't work out golden hada also taking a risk uh, though because crescent angels has been bringing that a load of nine tails but he brought altaria meta gem and was lucky or maybe was smartly calling that it wasn't gonna get aligned to the a load of nine tails another risky lineup here from crescent angels that just doesn't really work out swampert lead into the altaria not good brings in the sable here still is an obstacle in the back as well which really isn't good versus Metacham or Altaria, so yeah, this is not looking too great. Uh, we're just, 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 just another matchup where we're gonna speed through a little bit. The Sableye chips down the Altaria as much as possible. Altaria gonna go for another Sky attack here, which takes out the Sableye, and now you're probably gonna come in your Obstagoon. Golden Hada probably stays in, or maybe he switches into... Oh no, oh wait, he goes into Swampert. Okay, yeah, at this point you're staying as alt. Might even shield this move or bring in your meta champ. Probably, yeah, probably lets it go. Bring, bring in your meta champ and you got the alignment you need, basically, because you can, you'll be able to power punch through this Swampert. Counter down. Oh, actually gets the Earthquake. Okay, okay, wait. Wait, wait. No, no, no. No, no, no. Look at this. Look at his damage. Look at his damage. You're going to shield this up, but the meta champ reaches another power punch and... This, this will be the hardest hitting power punch you've probably ever seen in your life. It's double super effective first an Obstagoon that hurts and even catches the Night Slash as a cherry on top. And Golden Hada takes the best of three versus Crescent Angel. Unfortunately, Crescent Angel was just in a very rough spot here team comp wise. That Altaria K9 duo is just extremely tough to deal with and requires Crescent Angels to make some risky calls which unfortunately just didn't work out for him. Next up we got an absolutely epic matchup with Dancing Rob versus Crescent Angels. Shadow Venusaur versus regular Venusaur. We got Dancing Rob, Rob with the Matter Champ, Lickitung, Shadow Venusaur, and Swampert, Alone Ninetales, and Galarian Stunfisk versus Crescent Angels line versus both these teams. Venusaur looks extremely strong. So I expect both battlers to bring their Venusaur every single game. What they bring alongside that can vary. Uh, I actually practiced versus Dancing Rob a, quite a bit, running a very similar line to Crescent Angels. Only difference was that I had Shadows on Swampert and Venusaur and Galarian Stunt facing that self Celix. But Dancing Rob is prepped to face this line. And one thing he ran versus me very often was Galarian Stunt Fisk, Shadow Venusaur, and Meta Gem, which is something I do see him bringing against Crescent Angels uh, too. In general, uh, bearing a solid core combined with Venusaur is just a very uh, good ID for Rob. So something like Licky Tongue, Matter Cham, or Glaring Stunfish, Matter Cham, or maybe even a lot of Night Hill Swampert. No, no. All right, you don't want to do a lot of Night Hill Swampert since you'll be very weak to Venusaur. I expect both players to just play as strong against Venusaur as possible and then run their own Venusaur as like a pivot or maybe a solid lead. Let's get into these uh, battles. First game, we see Glarian Stunfisk in the lead versus Registeel. This is our lead. Uh, Registeel generally loses since you get slightly outpaced. Uh, to these earthquakes which dancing rob just throws right away crescent angels lets it go go on, go, gonna go for the focus blast right here which dancing rob actually lets go i think both players really want to put uh, their venusaur into a situation where it shields up shields up that venusaur is just so strong dancing rob actually gonna catch a move on the shadow venusaur it's just a zap it is a zap cannon which has a ton of damage still even though uh, it is resisted uh, but a dancing rope is still able to get to a, v a frenzy plant there which even though his attack is dropped sableye is kind of forced to shield because it will do a ton of damage sableye now has a ton of energy though it's kind of unfortunate for dancing rob but he does have a lot of nine tails to be able to charm this down crescent angel is going to go straight for return there we see a shield from dancing rob that's huge, because that would have put uh, a lot of Nine Tails very low. Crescent Angel just one away from a return here. 
throwing a foul play but right before it uh, gets taken out but dancing rob calling that it is not a return very good counting there by dancing rob gonna be able to throw a weather ball into the venusaur here maybe the shielding air is a mistake because i'm pretty sure weather ball does less than the earthquake from stunfist which he's gonna bring in now but he's actually gonna go for the rock slide which is interesting probably try uh, there i think there's two reasonings for this one double rock slide that's like slightly more than earthquake or two just in case the Regi Seal comes in, you want to have some energy ready. But still, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird at this point. Crescent Angels catches the Earthquake on Regi Steel. We need a reply. No one catches moves from Dancing Rob, all right? Just a little history about Dancing Rob. No one ever catches a move against him. Dancing Rob is one of the best players I've ever seen at making sure someone doesn't catch against them. He's extremely good at just, you know, waiting a turn, making sure you see the opposing fast move animation come through before throwing your move. But he... He cracks. He cracks even over farms by one. And that small window of, of opportunity was taken by Crescent Angel to catch a move here which ultimately will win him the game in here as he's gonna get to not one frenzy but two frenzies against his alone nine tails and dancing rob now so he just lets the first frenzy go through what a game by crescent angels there. next up we see a venusaur mirror shadow versus non-shadow this is all gonna come down to frenzy plant baits or whoever wins cmp here and we see them both going for the frenzy plant bait there which is wild get shielded by crescent angel and now rob is gonna put up his shield as well uh very important information to note is that rob actually wins the cmp tie so if they both go with the same moves now rob will win this matchup since he is gonna get to the moves earlier a crescent angel is gonna go for the sludge one right here right before rob is able to get to our move we see a shield come up on both sides and now rob and crescent angels are both gonna switch trying to catch a sludge one of each other and we see a rock smash Reggie Steel come out. Oh my goodness. Crescent Angels locked in the wrong Reggie Steel. I have some background on this. Uh, apparently, Crescent Angels, uh, like when he was selecting his battle party, an auto wrecked battle party had been selected, which had a Reggie Steel. And he assumed that was the Reggie Steel from his party. So he just added the Venusaur and Sableye onto it and was like, all right, I'm set, locked it in. Without checking if the Reggie Steel the game had recommended was actually the right Reggie Steel. So this was unfortunately a player error. And in a case of player error, Dancing Rob will get the win here. No, no rematch required. Uh, though, uh, though, even if, even if that wasn't a player error, I think Dancing Rob, if, or, I mean, even if that ha hadn't happened, I think Dancing Rob probably wins this match. Since Galarian Stunfisk will be able to beat uh, Reggie Steel in the zeros. Then Crescent Angels probably brings in either Sableye or Venusaur, which, well, the Sableye you can take out with Aloha Ninetales. And since you win uh, CMP with your Venusaur, or Rob wins Venus with CMP with his Venusaur, is able to take out the Venusaur with his own Venusaur as well. So I think even without that happening, Rob would have probably won the game, but it would have been much more interesting <laughs> with the proper Reggie Steel, that is for sure. All right, this next game, Rob makes an extremely ballsy call and he leads the Swampert versus an opponent that loves to bring Venusaur. Uh, and it works out since we see a Reggie Steel on the lead here. Oh, 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 look at this. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wait, wait, wait. wait. This is so good. Oh my god. Wait, 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 wait. This is so good. This is so good. Rob knows. Rob knows that this is a bad matchup for Crescent Angels, of course, and that he's gonna probably instant switch in, into the safest Pokemon on his team, which is Venusaur. Venusaur is ultra safe for Crescent Angels. Rob doesn't really have a great answer to Venusaur on his team, besides his own Venusaur. So what he does he's, is he predicts the switch and just instant switches into his own Venusaur so that they're equal on energy. That is so ridiculous. A absolutely ridiculous call right there. If Crescent Angels would have stayed in with the Reggie Steel there, Rob would have looked so stupid. He would have looked so stupid. <laughs> and he would have been in a very rough spot. 
Unfortunately, he does no shield a sludge bomb there, which also puts him in kind of a rough spot. But he also doesn't really need to switch advantage there, since he has the Swampert and the Galarian Stunfisk, which can both deal uh, with the Registeel just fine. Uh, Dancing Rob over farming a bunch, gonna go for another sludge here, which Crescent Angels does shield. He wants to switch advantage here, doesn't want the Registeel uh, aligned to the Swampert. Rob could decide to throw up another shield there, but just gonna let it go. Probably gonna bring in the Galarian Stunfisk now. Uh, you know, this could still get kind of dangerous for Rob here, I think, if Crescent Angel decides to keep his Venusaur alive, which he does by sacking the Earthquake on the Sableye. Wow. Uh, Rob farming up here and catches the foul play on his Swampert, which is kind of dead weight since there is still a Venusaur on the field. Uh, is he going to be able to get to another Hydro? He should be able to get there before the Sableye gets to a foul play. Decides to CMP tie, uh, so the Swampert takes as much... Uh, Shadow Crawl damage as possible, so this Venusaur can't really farm down. Well, it can't, can't farm down, but it doesn't get uh, more energy than uh, than necessary. And that really helps Rob right here, because he's able to CMP tie on the Earthquake right before this Venusaur gets to another Frenzy, and now it's all up to Galarian Stunfish. You do have one shield, you outpace the Registeel to two Earthquakes. Uh, are you going to be able to survive the lock-on style? That is the question. That is the question. Or will you be able to kill with Rock Slide? I don't think Rock Slide is enough. You need to go. You need to go for the Earthquake. You need to go for the Earthquake. Do you get locked on down? Do you get locked on down? You don't get locked on down and Rob takes the win. Wow. <laughs> so freaking close. How many catches did we see that game? I don't know. Absolutely ridiculous amount. GG's. Next up, we see Dancing Rob lead his Metacham into the Venusaur. This is actually not too bad of a matchup for uh, Metacham as you're super bulky, so you can survive a Frenzy plant and could get to uh, an Ice Punch and a Psychic along the way as long as you shield. Uh, the second Frenzy, this is actually where Shadow Swampert is better. I mean, Shadow Venusaur is better since 12 Vine Whips plus a Frenzy knockout. So you can actually knock a Metacham out before they get to two Ice Punches even. But uh, since it's a regular Venusaur, the Metacham will get to the Psychic here. Crescent Angels actually making a pretty... I would say odd play and just double shooting the just double shooting the venusaur uh, before throwing his second move i would have definitely thrown a move right before the psychic there just to get a shield but the crescent angel decides to just load up an energy which i guess makes a little bit of sense as well uh since i mean that energy is going to be useful against anything in rob's team crescent angels goes for the hydro cannon there now which rob lets go uh, and he goes for another one. Going for Earthquake there would have been a little bit more optimal, but ultimately it doesn't matter. I don't think he would have reached the Hydro versus Venusaur anyway, which farms down now. Crescent Angels brings in the Registeel. This is really not too bad of a matchup for Venusaur. A Venusaur actually wins the ones here and the twos just straight up. Uh, so since he has two shields, this should be pretty easy pickings for it. Though, we do have to remember, Crescent Angel still has a Venusaur loaded up with like two sludge bombs as well. So Dancing Rob really has to be careful with his shield usage there. Doesn't want to use the shield on the Venusaur. So let's do Zap Cannon go. Then switches in Metacham into the Registeel, which he can now hit with the Ice Punch. Put it into a range where Fl Frenzy Plant will knock out. Rob doesn't throw it, probably expecting the opposing Venusaur to come in. So he throws another Vine Whip there. Gonna double shield this now. Actually... Why double shield? I mean, just throw the sludge bomb. Even if Crescent has had another move, you win CMP. And now, because you have a shield, you should be able to just shield up the South Cannon and then outpace to the next move. As he is reaching for the Frenzy Plant, and he reaches it. Nice fist bump from Rope there. Let's, re let's replay that. That was, a, that was a nice fist bump. That was a very nice fist bump. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Looks weird, sped up, but... It's all good. Rob takes the win. Unfortunately, Crescent Angel is out. Uh, Rob moves on to the Grand Finals, which I already made a video about. If you want to watch the Grand Finals, I'll put the link down in the description below for that video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I really want to give a big round of applause to Crescent Angel's absolutely amazing plays. I think versus Gordon Hara, he just had a very big team comp disadvantage, which is why I lost there. And versus Rob. Rob just played... A little bit better and i feel like rob also had a slight team comp advantage there so yeah well played to him really hope we're gonna see more of him anyway thank you all for watching see you next video good luck for bell stringers